G'day YouTube, 1MJ here. Uh, welcome back to my channel if you're tuning in again, and welcome to anyone who's tuning in for the first time. I came across an interesting story today, uh, and it's kind of doing the rounds on YouTube and uh, all across, you know, crypto news things, and it says XRP isn't a security, and everyone's really been focusing on that, uh, but what a lot of people have failed to kind of recognize is that this is what the former chairman of the uh, Commuti uh, Commodity Futures Trading Commission has said. So he's no longer working for them. He used to. Uh, and so while this is great news that the former person might say that, and hopefully that will lead to uh, the current uh, chairman uh, declaring the same thing, uh, we're not quite there yet. Uh, now, I did mention in my first uh, video that I am an XRP holder. I've got about uh, just under 8% of my uh, sort of portfolio in XRP. So I'm a bit of an XRP believer. While the price hasn't really been doing much for quite a long time, it's just basically continued to go down and down and down. The adoption has been growing. There's more and more uh, companies getting on board with XRP uh, and the banks are getting on board. And my personal belief is it's going to be adopted uh, in the future. Maybe not anytime soon, but I definitely think it will happen in the not too distant future anyway. It still might take a couple more years, but I definitely can see uh, it being used. But it was an interesting read, uh, you know. Uh, this gentleman has basically said that, you know, he's written up a paper about why he doesn't think it is... Uh, oh, sorry, completely lost there. Why he doesn't think it is a security. That's right. Sorry, got a little bit lost there. But what I found really interesting is, number one, he's no longer the chairman of there. But number two, this is really important. He's no longer a regulator, so that's important. And in fact, his new employer is on the payroll of Ripple and the largest single owner of Ripple whose co-founders actually created the cryptocurrency. So it might be fair to say that he's probably a little bit biased when he's written up this report. Uh, so yeah, interesting times ahead for Ripple. They currently have two court cases uh, against them. So one is that they're a, com a commodity and I forget what the other one was. I'd have to look into it again. But last I read, they were combining the court cases and they were going to deal with both of them in the one sort of thing. So yeah, interesting times ahead. But also, I found a nice meme and I thought I'd share this with everyone. With everyone. I don't always put my life savings at risk, but when I do, I bet on XRP. <laughs> oh, I love that one. It's a good, and there's a ton of memes with this guy in there. I think it's quite funny. Now, please, any XRP... Uh, you know, the XRP army there, don't hate on me, I'm an XRP holder, but I don't mind having a bit of a laugh at XRP's expense, or even my own expense every now and then, so yeah, please don't hate on me. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the uh, market cap for today. So, it's not a, a great day, everything's generally just kind of trending sideways, not a whole lot is happening. As we can see, very little uh, gains for kind of the big players, if any at all. But something I am happy with is that generally uh, the DeFi projects, they're still ten generally trending all right. They're not going too bad. Chainlink, there we go. Oh, I've got a little bit of Chainlink. I think around about 2% of my portfolio is in Chainlink. Very small position in Stella. So yeah, generally not too bad. It's a green day uh, for my portfolio in whole, but nothing major. Just kind of tracking along slowly. And what I want to do is talk about where I think uh, crypto is going to go in the not too distant future. So I've got my graph here uh, up on TradingView, and this is the Bitstamp one. That's the one I like to use. It's got a, uh, a longer timeline that you can really look at. So what I've noticed is that we're still trying to, we're not trying, we are still trading in this kind of trough. Now it's still a downward trough, uh, no doubt about that. The prices are kind of getting lower and lower and lower uh, in the long sort of term, but What's really important is the lows are getting higher though. Our lows are starting to grow. So what I'm really looking for here, and this is the daily chart, is I want to stay into this higher, I want us to stay in this higher part of the trough here. Now, also something that is very interesting is we have the 200 moving day average. And this is generally uh, a pretty good indicator of where you're at and whether we will use this as support. And uh, quite often we do use this as support, but on occasions it can be a little bit of resistance as well. But this is my theory of what I think is going to happen. I think we are probably going to hopefully stay up in this uh, top trough here 
and we will possibly trade down a little bit and I think we might get down to around about the kind of $8,000 range, $8,500 range. And my gut feeling says I think we might bounce off the 200 day moving average at some stage. So whenever this, you know, the current price finally meets the 200 day moving average. Now it could be over here somewhere. I'm, I'm guessing it's kind of kind of travel along here and might happen around about over here. So I do think it's gonna be later in this year. Now I could be completely wrong, but my gut feeling is that I think we will kind of trade in here and at some stage, we're gonna hit the 200 day moving average and then I think we're going to break out of this channel and then I think we're going to start to make our move. Now, where I think we're probably going to move from once we break out of here is I think we're going to come up and test uh, this old high that we had back in sort of, yeah, 2019, June, July 2019. Now, it might not be quite up there, it might be sort of down here a little bit, but it's going to be about this range here I see us getting to relatively quickly. So I think we'll move up get to around here fairly quickly, track down and then sideways a little bit and then I think we will move up and we'll start to test those new highs. Exactly when that's gonna happen, I'm not really sure, not 100%, but I'm guessing maybe by the end of the year, maybe early next year, we might to see, we might start to see uh, us testing those new all time highs. Now it'll be interesting to see exactly how high it can go. You know, the last bull run, this was all retailers really getting into it. There wasn't a lot of institutional uh, money in it at that stage. I'm not saying there wasn't any. There was definitely some smart institutional money in there. Very, very early adopters, but not a whole lot. So if this was done all on retail FOMO, and it was only a very small percentage as well, there's only, you know, maybe two to 5% of the world into crypto. Now that the big, you know, hedge funds have moved in and corporate is moving in and all that kind of thing, It'll be interesting to see where this is. But my theory is I think we're going to have a prolonged kind of bull run. It's not going to be as parabolic as this kind of happened. You know, it happened sort of all very quick. I think we're probably going to hit our peak, not uh, December next year, because de generally it's around kind of December, November that Bitcoin hits its peaks. Uh, it's Yeah, it's what it's done before. I don't think it's going to happen this time. I think our uh, next, you know, peak, I guess, will possibly come a little bit later in the year. I think the uh, cycles will be a little bit more protracted and a little bit longer. I know a lot of people saying they kind of think uh, December, January, so not January next year, December next year and January 2022 is where we're going to hit our new all-time highs. And I'm not saying it can't happen. Uh, it's just, you know, from my gut feeling, uh, you know, watching the markets and things that are happen happening and again, seeing this really play out for quite a long time and taking a long time to coil and break out again. I think it's going to be a, a, an elongated is a better one, an elongated uh, cycle. And I don't think we're going to hit our all time highs when people kind of think uh that they would. Again, I don't think it'll be around that November, December kind of time. I think it'll be a little bit later. And unfortunately, something else that I also think is because the institutional money has got in, uh, it's really going to be a, a choppy and stormy ride. They're gonna bounce it up and bounce it down and all over the place. And crypto's been like that anyway. But uh, yeah, my gut feeling says the uh, the institutions are really gonna yeah, get stuck in it and make it difficult. And as I've said before in my last video, I think hodling is generally the best option for most people, unless you're come some kind of savant and you know you can just read the markets really, really well. It's easier to just buy and hold for the long term, you know, whether that's five months, sorry, not five months, five years, ten years, twenty years, whatever it may be, that's where you're gonna make make the most amount of gains. Trading is a very hard uh, gig and there's only a few traders that are actually profitable and even less traders are profitable against uh, long-term investors. So that's my thoughts. And again, I, I have no idea what the final price is going to be at the next all-time high. You know, I've heard some really crazy stuff. You know, people saying it can go to a million and some people going to five million. Who knows, to be honest. My sort of gut feeling is I think we will go around about the 130, $150,000 mark possibly, but I think we could definitely go to maybe 300K as well. And then what happens after that? Whether we see the same kind of 
retracements that we've seen before. I'm not sure because the institutional money uh, is in. I don't know if the retracements are going to be 70, 80 percent anymore. I think the retracements are actually going to be uh, a lot less. So let's say we get to 300,000. I think the retracement would maybe be around to the $200,000 mark. I don't think the institutions would let it go a whole lot lower. Uh, I think they would be buying it up earlier and things like that. That's just my personal thoughts. Anyway, just a quick video for me today. So I'd like to thank you for tuning into my channel and having a look. If you like what I'm doing, again, please hit that like button. Leave some comments down below and let me know what you think I can improve on. Uh, yeah, good, bad, otherwise, I guess I'll have to deal with it. Preferably not the bad. I'd rather some sort of good uh, constructive comments at the very least. But anyway, thanks again. I appreciate your time. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. I'm out.